We've all made dumb mistakes, like accidentally calling your teacher mum, leaving some cash in an ATM machine, or having a favourite Game of Thrones character. Being a massive evil corporation gives you the opportunity to make terrible mistakes on a much bigger scale. Whether that's accidentally endangering all of humanity, dabbling with supernatural powers beyond your control, or worst of all, upsetting the shareholders. And if I knew anything about business, I'd know why that was a bad thing. For your enjoyment, here are the seven dumbest mistakes made by evil corporations. And beware of spoilers for the following games. The Umbrella Corporation of Resident Evil fame has cornered the market in weaponized viruses named after letters of the alphabet. If you need to convert a population into zombies but you don't have a bioweapons research division in-house, then look no further than this nefarious conglomerate. How far away are you from the nearest branch line? About ten minutes to... Huh? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Not every bioweapons research project is a winner. Sometimes it's a Mr. X. Now, Umbrella, I don't want to tell you how to do your job, not when your job is designing monsters to kill me, but have you considered making your go-to guy not one of these things? Jesus Christ! Matey here is a variant of Umbrella's tyrant line of procedurally mutated humans, dispatched by Umbrella to deal with you in Resident Evil 2. He's known as Mr. X to his friends. Only kidding, he has no friends. Mr. X pursues you throughout the game with the perseverance of a student loan officer, sure, but at a speed no greater than a brisk walk, as if he wants to chase you, but also he read a sign back there that said no running. Jesus, stay down! And sure, he's physically imposing and his face looks like a giant thumbprint, so have some points there for presentation, Umbrella. But when he gets up close, all he can do is punch you. His little hat and custom trench coat, meanwhile, make him look like he's adorably trying to go undercover as the world's largest, greyest man. I put it to you, Umbrella, that he would be 180,000% more scary if he were nude. Everybody, don't visualise it and we'll get through this okay. Oh, I did it. Clearly, Mr. X is the beloved pet project of some scientist high up enough at Umbrella that no one could make him let it go. Let it go, Jerry! Stop trying to make Mr. X happen! Jerry. That is pure Argent energy you've just taken into your system. It seems to agree with you. The United Aerospace Corporation, or UAC, has been a pain in your space marine behind since the very first Doom game. The UAC have bases on Mars and Mars' moons Phobos and Deimos, and specialise in radioactive waste disposal, weird experiments, and it seems, crates. Now, be honest, the UAC. Do all these crates spark joy? As you might have guessed, Doom doesn't represent just another day at the UAC office. Owing to a catastrophic teleportation experiment, a portal to the underworld is opened and all the denizens of hell come pouring through. Well, I say all the denizens of hell. I haven't seen a single traffic warden yet. The UAC's colossal screw-up doesn't just affect Mars and its moons, though. By Doom 2, it's become clear that Earth is also infested with horrifying monsters, and the only way to end the infernal onslaught is to travel into hell itself and blow up Doom designer John Romero's severed head. I do not remember that bit from the Bible. Maybe it's in Corinthians. By the Doom reboot released in 2016, the UAC have abandoned all shame. From what we can tell, they're openly conducting these experiments in an attempt to use their portal to harness clean, renewable hell energy? We balance their hell energy with our science, making it usable and safe. We solved an energy crisis the world had no answer for. It works. Hey, and if the world's infested with demons, we'll all be too dead to worry about climate change anyway. It's win-win. What's his story? Property of Armacam Technology Corporation. 
They're working on a military contract to develop an army of clones that respond to a psychic commander. Top secret, of course. Armacam Technology Corporation is a global mega business which specializes in the research and development of technology with military applications, which means, and say it with me, super soldiers. Armacam, listen. You could rebrand yourself Super Soldiers R Us and save yourself a fortune in marketing costs. At any rate, their terrible company name is the least of Armacam's dumb mistakes. It pales in comparison to their biggest dumb mistake, which was to torture telepathic infant Alma Wade to harness her unknowable powers, then put her in a coma so she could later be impregnated to create, that's right, Super Soldiers. You will be a god among men. Jeez, Armacan, no more science for you. With all the inevitability of spilling mustard on a clean white t-shirt, this hideous experiment does not create a production line of Captain America's, but does create a psychic witch monster who turns on her makers and lays waste to everything in her path. Great, who's gonna buy that? Another problem for the boys in marketing. Can't wait to see how they spin that one. Welcome back. Well, your numbers look good. Now let's make sure we can break your brain, all right? In Assassin's Creed, Abstergo Industries is a huge multinational conglomerate that acts as a front for the ancient order of the Templars. It's Abstergo that's come up with the greatest scientific discovery in human history, the Animus, which allows you to live out the memories of your ancestors encoded in your DNA. You okay? <gasps> I told you he'd be fine. Bastards! Now, now, I just saved your life. Abstergo's priority is tracking down elusive first civilization technology. But hey, you've got to keep the lights on at Abstergo HQ. So they also run Abstergo Entertainment, which makes lucrative movies and video games based on these retrieved memories. I mean, I assume they're lucrative based on how swish the offices are. Impressive, right? You don't have a fish tank elevator unless you're making serious bank or you're a Bond villain. Ooh, or both. Now, I know what you're thinking. Making video games out of Animus data is a brilliant idea, not a dumb mistake. You can use the video games to broadcast Templar propaganda to millions of unwitting gamers, and finally, crush the Assassin Order once and for all. So that's why they're making a game starring sexy assassin pirate Edward Kenway? Huh. This seems like a bad idea making the hero of your game a cool Chris Hemsworth looking pirate who also rocks the iconic white hood. And while you'd expect Abstergo to censor the game a bit, surely it'll be obvious that the hard partying gold robbing pirate is more of a fan of assassin freedom than he is of Templar rules. All those in favor of storming this cove and taking this ship, stomp and shout aye! aye! So why would a company that is the modern day front for the Templars make games where the heroes are all cool assassins and the enemies are all jerk Templars? And also, you're training all the players to expertly stab those jerk Templars. I'm sorry about this, mate, but I can't risk you telling your Templar friends about me still kicking around. Think it through, guys. Exogeny Corporation is at the forefront of human expansion in the new galactic economy, funding colonial development and securing resource rights to ensure our progress as a species. Further inquiries regarding company policy may be directed to consumer information services during regular business hours. Exogeny Corporation is an interstellar company that specializes in planetary exploration and colonization. Sounds great, you thought, taking that graduate job with them fresh out of college. I'm going to make a difference in this galaxy, you thought. There's no way they'll turn me into a hive mind plant zombie in a secret off-world experiment, you thought. Shows what you know with your fancy xenogeology degree. Think you're better than me. Because guess what? Exogeny Corporation lives by the exact same code of space business as Wayland yutani which is to say, if it's deadly and terrifying, we'll definitely try to turn it into a new line of lawn furniture or something. Exogeny funded this colony. Without them, we wouldn't be stuck here. They specialize in colonization. In return for bankrolling the colony, we work for them. Except there isn't anything here. Or if there is, we didn't find it. Shepard should have known that something was up from the shifty executive running things on the Exogeny colony on the planet Ferros. Hold it right there, Commander. This is an exogeny project, I'm taking control. 
And yet, with the Geth attack going on, it wasn't until much too late Shep discovered that deep beneath the surface of Ferros lived a 50,000-year-old sentient plant that uses spores to mind-control its army of victims. First, we just need to find... To find... What is that? Nothing's ever simple, is it? Not only that, Exogeny had sacrificed its entire staff to this Thorian plant monster, letting them get infected in order to study its mind control powers. Nobody's gonna miss a few colonists. And then what? Some kind of weight loss chewing gum? What's the business model? Show me some projections. Exogeny knew all along what would happen to those people. It was deemed necessary to assess the true potential of Species 37. The unwise experiment goes horribly wrong, and Shepard has to clear up this little shop of horrors. Consequently, Exogeny loses its ancient space plant, and a huge wadge of the investment capital it sunk into this otherwise unprofitable backwater planet. Oh well, back to the drawing board. I'm thinking something where we take Predator DNA to engineer frost-proof bananas. Money, please. Officer in danger! 10-5, please repeat. 10-5, all units, all units, emergency. Officer in danger. Ace Plaza, repeat. Ace Plaza, all units. They were all dead. The final gunshot was an exclamation mark to everything that had led to this point. I released my finger from the trigger. And then it was over. Drugs seem to be a huge problem on both sides of the law in the New York City of Max Payne 1. On the streets, there's a new drug called Valkyr that's ruining lives and enriching the city's criminal overlords. Meanwhile, downtrodden DEA agent hero Max himself is hooked on over-the-counter painkillers, gobbling them up like popcorn. Still, those things seem to cure gunshot wounds. I can't even shift this headache. It turns out that Valkyr is actually a designer drug originally invented by the US military to improve the endurance and performance of its soldiers. Though, if you're looking for eager test subjects in the army, maybe don't name it Project Valhalla, after the place where warriors go after they die. Just a quick branding tip there. After the government project was canned, presumably because over-the-counter painkillers were way more effective, development of the drug was secretly continued by the pharmaceutical company Acer Corporation. Drop it. Don't move. Game over, Max Payne. Crooked CEO Nicole Horn distributed the drug via the Punchinello crime family as a highly addictive recreational drug, the symptoms of which include hallucinations, nausea, and really bad dream sequence levels. Ugh, I'm never touching the stuff again. The only problem for a big pharma corporation making illegal drugs is that they're, well, illegal. As a result, in order to hide it from the authorities, Acer has to maintain a secret lab underneath a steel foundry. One loose-lipped employee, and the whole enterprise could come tumbling down. Gentlemen, we're done here. Take me to Cold Steel. Okay, I wasn't expecting the loose-lipped employee to be the actual CEO. Besides, even if the law doesn't find your secret lab and shut you down, there's always the danger that one rogue DEA agent with a constipated expression will turn your office into the lobby scene from the Matrix and then drop a radio antenna on your helicopter as you try and escape. Which, let's be honest, is going to play havoc with your share price. Can't you just do what a normal pharmaceutical company does and just crank up the price of some vital bit of medication? Satire. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. An evil corporation doesn't have to engineer viruses, or create super soldiers, or even run a social networking platform. Corporate evil actually comes in all shapes and sizes, such as the shapes and sizes of the terrifying animatronic mascot at family restaurant Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, operated by Fazbear Entertainment. Uh, the animatronic characters here do get a bit quirky at night, but do I blame them? No. If I were forced to sing those same stupid songs for 20 years and I never got a bath, I'd probably be a bit irritable at night too. Fazbear Entertainment is engaged in evil business, as if you couldn't tell from the dead-eyed grin of its robotic entertainers. And that evil business is not just selling substandard pizza to kids' birthday parties. 
No, these creeptacular animatronics are free to roam the restaurant after closing time, ostensibly to keep their parts from seizing up like the Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz, but somehow even creepier. It's at this time when these misprogrammed miscreants will violently seize any human they come across, then they will lethally mash his or her fragile human body into a spare animatronic shell with disgusting results. This is supposedly because they believe that human is a naked endoskeleton in need of a robot suit, but it's probably also because the restaurant was left with some serious bad juju after a gruesome murder back in the day. Defenders and shareholders of the Fazbear Empire will be quick to point out that Fazbear Entertainment is not legally liable for any hauntings, visitations or other spooky happenings of a supernatural nature. But we submit to you, the Ethics Committee of the Restaurateurs Association, that Fazbear willfully turned a blind eye to these dangerous contraptions, perpetrated a grisly cover-up and, in their worst mistake of all, wasted a fortune in replacing murdered security guards. Recruitment costs money! That's evil business and bad business. Just think of all the money they could have saved if only Fazbear Entertainment had invested in replacing the animatronics with non-roaming, non-murdering upgrades. Or a karaoke machine. Everyone loves a karaoke machine. No. <gasps> Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. And if you'd like to watch something else, up here we have a video from us about the cheat codes that changed our lives. And down here we have a video from Sister Channel Outside Extra about stressful countdowns for which we still haven't unclenched. Right, now I'm going to sing you out. No.